So this should be a fairly quick teardown. This is a Dell 210 watt power adapter. Unfortunately, it's completely dead. And it's sealed shut with four T10 security screws. And there were some rubber feet over those. I'm assuming this just kind of clamped together, yeah. So it's sitting for a while, so hopefully it's discharged. I've never actually seen the inside of one of these before, so I'm kind of curious. The goal is to open it up without touching anything, but I don't think I'm going to get that. There we go. Interesting. So these are a lot de more densely packed than I thought. I suspected that they might be potted, but it's all just structure. Yeah. So, oops, hopefully that wasn't too loud. There we go. Looks like there's some tape holding this together. I'll oh, hand that. Um, well, I guess we'll find out the hard way. All right. It's been unplugged for a while, at least two days. So I would assume it would bleed itself down. be honest, I don't normally tear stuff like this down. So I'm not quite sure what the best approach is. Don't want to get too handsy with it, even though I'm already probably touching something that's part of the uh, ground plane. It's only a 120 volt shock, right? <laughs> oh boy. Just some aluminum plates. I would suspect Partially a ground plane, and then they also probably use these for heat dissipation. Although even with uh, with this, uh, these do get pretty warm under load. So I would assume there's probably some inefficiency issues there as well. Getting a bigger tip. the ideal tool for this, but it should work. Let's see, oh, I got side cutters. And I think I can just fatigue that one maybe. Definitely not serviceable, that's for sure. Interesting, some goop. Hmm. A little bit to see on the bottom. question is, are there any power capacitors on this? I don't really see any sparks, so hopefully nothing there to zap me. And it doesn't look like there's anything burnt on the bottom side of the board. The other question would be, what's under the, sh the shielding or aluminum material? Not sure what it's intended to be. We'll use the drill. Not a big fan of getting shocked, so if any of this looks silly, you know why. <laughs> nope, that's not related to the top.
There we go. That was uh, glued down with some thermal epoxy. Oh, there's the capacitor. That's the biggest thing I'm scared of. Hmm, I don't even really want to bridge that from the top. I'll flip it over and see if it needs to be bridged. Um, yeah, I'll just come back with a multimeter. I didn't want to check the fuse anyways. Alright, let's see what we got here on this capacitor. I don't know, voltage. Although I guess it'd probably be DC, right? I'm not sure. I think that's a filter cap for the AC input. But, uh, yeah, no voltage. So, the interesting thing that I want to see is this heat shrink fuse there. Let's go flip this over. And where, oh, where? One there, one there. Okay. So, the fuse would be these two pins here, but I gotta go in continuity mode. Hmm, fuse is good. So it's kind of a mystery what died. At least we have a little bit more we can bust off. Like I said, I don't like getting shocked, so <laughs> that's why this looks weird. Oh, now let's solder down. Yeah, either way, no visibly bad caps. The fuse, whoops, just cut my table. Um, the fuse is still good. So, hard to say what failed. I guess we can do a smell test. No, it just smells like electronics. No uh, awful burnt smells of any kind. It's really mysterious and why some of this stuff fails. Like, I'm sure if I was smart, I could hook up AC and trace out the paths and figure out what happened to this, but honestly, I think these are only worth like 20 bucks now, so not really worth the time. Probably wasn't even worth the time to make this video, in all honesty, but I thought it'd be interesting for myself and others. And that's what the adapter was. It's a D846D, 19.5 volts at 10.8 amps output. So... Yeah, hopefully that was interesting. Didn't really learn anything from it other than what it looks like on the inside. But, thanks for watching.